<clears throat> this, um, we've got to the final session on Psalm 19. We've had five of them all together. And um, I thought it'd be helpful just to have a little bit of a, a summary of where we've, where we've got to so far. So um, here, here, here we are. And, um, and we've seen something like this. Okay, there's a bit of a funnel here. And um, God wonderfully is making himself. Oh, this is not working so well this morning. Let me try this slide instead. There we go. God wonderfully is making himself um, known. And at the top end of the funnel, we've seen general revelation. Okay, so this is the world that he's made. Um, and um, it's amazing, isn't it? Uh, and particularly in our, in our day and age, we've got the technology to appreciate the world around us like no generation before. And you can click through iPlayer and you'll find eight David Attenborough box sets taking you around the world in, in breathtaking detail. And that's where David starts um, here. The heavens declare the glory of God. So that's the top end of the funnel. Um, the majority of people who watch those David Attenborough um, programs, and certainly the majority of people across the planet, look at the world and assume there must be some kind of creative force. That's the probably still the majority consensus, um, as Psalm 19 would lead us to expect. However, it leaves a big question, and that question is, what is he like? And that's why, kind of at the bottom end of the funnel, God doesn't just give us kind of general revelation. We've seen also what um, theologians have come to call specific um, revelation. And that's where David moves on to um, from, uh, from here, talking about the glories of God's word and how the creator of the, the universe has made himself known um, specifically. Um, and the question is, where does, that, where does that now leave us? And what we see together in Psalm 19 is it leaves us needing to respond. Okay, so at the top end here, we've got God. God has wonderfully um, revealed himself. And now um, we are called together to respond to all that um, he has revealed, both in, wor in world and in word. And uh, that's where David lands here, okay, by keeping them, he's talking about God's specific revelation in the Bible, your servant is warned in keeping them, there's great reward, but who can discern their own errors? Forgive my head hidden faults. Keep your servants also from willful sins. May they not rule over me. Then I will be blameless, innocent of great transgression. May these words of my mouth and this meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, Lord, my rock and my redeemer. As David's been saying, that the Lord, this personal name for God, he's made himself known personally in the Bible. And therefore, our job now is to respond personally to him. And did you spot um, all the personal language here that David uses? My hidden faults rule over me, then I will be blameless. May these words of my mouth. This is a, a personal response to um to god's revelation how does he want to respond personally well he wants to align himself with god that's the key word here um align himself with god so the bible uh, warns him uh, when he goes off track and therefore, he says, look, forgive my hidden faults when I'm going offline, um, off track and um, keep me from willful sins. You know, he wants to be to be blameless to kind of illustrate it in a picture. It's something like um, something like this. Here is God's um, revelation in his word. It's this straight line. This is life as it's meant to be. And then here is um, here is my life. OK, and this is. <laughs> This is, this is my life, when I'm being honest. It's a bit of a zigzag. And, um, and, you know, sometimes I veer off over here. Sometimes I veer off down there. Sometimes I veer off over here. And um, what David is saying is, look, 
your, what you have spoken to us is so good. I want my life increasingly to be aligned to what you have spoken to us. Um, and wonderfully, God actually helps us to, to do that. We know from the New Testament that it took the death of his son and the gift of um, the spirit to actually enable us to, um, to walk in God's ways. Um, I'm forgiven. I'm empowered to do that. And as David says here, actually in doing this, in aligning our lives to all that God has said, um, he says here there is great reward. Um, it's not talking about the reward of, of going to heaven. That's only possible through grace. Rather, this reward, he's talking about this, the refreshing of the soul, the making wise, the giving light to the eyes and joy to the heart. In other words, when you are walking in God's ways, it is the best way to be going. It's always a life um, of flourishing and blessing, even when it's challenging. Now, David realizes that he needs help with this. And that's why um, he asks God for help. Keep your servant from willful sins. Um, forgive my hidden faults. Um, he realizes that he needs um, help. Um, and the motivation behind this response, this, this desire to align himself, well, it's right here at the end. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight. Okay, ultimately, uh, the God whose grace is his rock and his redeemer, who's redeemed him, um, he wants to please um, that God. So as believers, this is always how we should respond to God making himself known. His revelation um, and then our response here um, is always to seek to align ourselves to all that God has made known about himself. God reveals himself that we might know him, be redeemed by him, and then have the joy of walking in his ways. So as we finish off today, I guess it's a bit of a challenge. <clears throat> and the challenge is, are you both appreciating God, um, but then also humbly, in the power of God's Holy Spirit, seeking to align yourselves with all you discover about this wonderful God? That takes humility. It takes focus. It takes a lifetime. But it's a journey. Uh, worth traveling because it's a journey we were made for the journey of appreciating and then aligning ourselves well let me close with a prayer loving father we we praise you for uh, being a god who's made yourself known um, in the world around in uh, your word testifying to christ and um, lord as we get to know you better and better we pray that our hearts desire like David's might be to align ourselves with all that you say, knowing that it is for our flourishing and for our blessing that we do say. And we ask that for Jesus' sake. Amen.